Welcome to the CX Green Room. I'm Ginger Conlon, Thought Leadership Director at Genesis. And we are live from experience today. And the theme here is accelerating CX transformation. And of course, artificial intelligence is essential to that journey. And I'm here today with our newest co-host, Greg Thomas. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Greg Thomas, and I look after the thought leadership team here at Genesis. Super excited to be here. And we're joined by Sharad Shashdev from Accenture Song. He's their global lead for AI-powered customer experiences. And today on The Green Room, we're going to talk about what everybody's talking about, which is how AI is going to impact the customer experience. And we're going to learn from Sharad the best practices and best strategies for adopting AI in customer experience. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, JJ. Uh, so, so we'll start with a really easy question. Tell us about yourself and tell us about your role at Accenture. Sure. So I am a managing director at Accenture. I lead the customer experience practice. I deal primarily with the AI and Gen AI aspects of it, Accenture being a huge firm. We have many other practice uh, practitioners that focus on different aspects. My specialty is AI and Gen AI. Fantastic. Well, when you talk about CX transformation, it seems like every conversation has AI included. And we all know AI has been around for a long time. But generative AI, even though that has been around for a while too, has really come on the scene. And so let's talk a little bit about why that is so exciting and what the potential is there in the customer experience. See, generative AI is very exciting. Even my kids tell me, right? They use it. And that's how I learn about generative AI more than I learn my job. <laughs> Kidding aside, generative AI is about comprehension. It's about language. It's about understanding. What is CX about? CX is about listening, understanding, and solving people's problems. Right. AI, if there was a function where AI was at its best, it already was in CX. It already was in customer experience because we really needed it. So even before generative AI, the natural language models that we were working with, the natural language IVRs, right, or the chatbots, they were fairly advanced in understanding what customers were saying. We had an understanding rate, if I measure in terms of customer base, of about 65% of conversations well understood by AI. With generative AI, the level of understanding is going to 85 to 90 percent, which means 90 percent of the conversations are well understood and well handled by generative AI. 90 percent gets you pretty much up there in terms of what AI and Gen AI can do. That's amazing. Any use cases stand out to you? See, if I think about customer experience, there are two kinds of use cases, three kinds probably. One is things we can do directly with customers. So we expose the channel to the customer where customer can talk to the system directly. The second is our contact center agents, our retail store, our field service, they can use Gen AI. So they can use Gen AI to find the answer for the customers when they're in their homes, when they're on phone with them. And the third area for Gen AI is the intelligence. Can I better understand what's happening in my environment? What are those million calls about at a level of detail that I never could in the past, right? So in the past, when I would look at the conversations, I would be able to classify them into 20 slots. It's a billing call. It's a technical troubleshooting call. It's a new customer acquisition call. You look at any company out there, they are tracking these conversations at 20, 25 buckets. Now, no conversation is that precise. And all billing conversations are also not created alike. Right. How do I find out that this billing conversation was about a customer who has been with us for 10 years? The bill has gone through the roof. The customer has recently been laid off. And the reason for that bill going through the roof is because he was laid off, he's at home, and using the services more in the peak usage time and not off peak usage time, right. which means now I should advise the customer to change the plan so they can. How many such conversations are happening? 
I cannot find that out with more traditional AI. But with generative AI, I can take every conversation and really peel the onion at that level, which means now I can take actions. I can talk to my marketing team about reaching out to certain customers. I can reach out to my web teams and tell them, look, this is exactly where customers are failing. I can train my agents, right? I can change the way I operate as a company. I can drive a culture change from one simple shift from AI to Gen AI for call monitoring, for conversational listening. Is that powerful? So, so shifting from the use cases and the benefits of AI, there's there's some concerns and there are some risks in generative AI, hallucinations, training data, bias, things like that. How do you how do you think about those risks and, and how do you advise your clients on how to navigate the risks around Gen AI? Sure. See, the way I think about the risk, I think about the risk at three levels. One is at the human level. Not all humans, even though they are trained, may behave the same way. And we see that in the variations. So we do have risk even when humans are taking calls. We have to monitor. There are systems in place. Quality monitoring is in place. We figured that out. Then comes the whole world of AI. In the past, when we were using AI in conversational systems, they were more programmed than trained. We would understand, and then that we would run a certain script to take the customer through. That's why it would feel personal, but yet a little rigid. And the way you had managed the risks there was by controlling the way the scripts get run, by understanding how well the intents are recognized. So we figured that system out. Then comes to generative AI. The power of generative AI is letting it loose versus scripting it, programming it, truly training it and letting it decide. But as you do that, as you give it the freedom it deserves, you need new guardrails. Right. Because the old guardrails won't work anymore. Right? And the new guardrails are really well defined by responsible AI. How do you think about those responsible AI guardrails? One is the way you design the system. Where is it pulling the information from? We have to control those sources. It cannot be going and pulling the information from the web. It has to be in a very, very contained set from my processes, my policies, my CRM system. So I know I'm controlling the content. Second, how do I test it? Mm -hmm. My standard testing methodologies don't work anymore because if I ask the question 100 times, same question, I may get 50 different answers. They're similar, but they're not identical. Are they within the realm of acceptance? Are they outside the bounds of acceptance? So I have to now train my system. I have to test my system differently. So I know all the time it's in the bound. Then I need constant monitoring. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure every conversation stays within bound as it's happening. Every response before it goes out should go through a filter. And hence, responsible AI is not a philosophy. It's a platform. It's a system. It's a set of processes. Because if I'm going to filter it, I know, okay, this response is going out of bounds. I either change the response or I bring in a human. So when you bring those things in there, you are allowing it the level of freedom that it deserves to create value while making sure it is not jeopardizing the customer experience. So I think it's just changing the philosophy in a very, very structured manner. And how do you feel like the, the CX community is thinking about those guardrails? Are, are people putting them in place in the right way? Do you feel like that understanding of, as you said, let it loose, but build those guardrails around it? How, how do you think the industry is doing? I think there's a level of excitement and a level of discomfort at the same time. If I look at the work we are seeing our clients do, and we are doing a lot of that with them, there is a desire to start that journey internally. Use it first for analytics. Even if it gets analytics wrong by 5%, it's still 95% compared to 50% in the past. So, okay, it's safe. Then can I expose this to my employees, my contact center agents, my retail agents, my field support? Because even if I get a few things wrong, I can capture feedback from them. And that way I can contribute to improve. And then expose it to the customers because they are truly my external stakeholders. I want to make sure I get it right. So we are seeing that kind of a journey happen. 
Some clients are still at the analytics phase. Some clients have touched upon that customer facing. So one of the publicly talked about uh, client for us is Vodafone. We have a customer facing bot running for their brand boxing. And uh, it's doing very good because we had the right guardrails in place. Customers are loving it. We are tracking all the things that I just talked about. I feel it's a moment, uh, it's, it's a bit of a time before every company will get there, but they will eventually get there. Yeah. So we are here at Experience, and you were in a session earlier, so I'm going to toss in an extra question because you, you mentioned that your session was about empathy and AI, yes. and that topic is fantastic. So tell us a little bit about how AI actually can help agents be more empathetic in their job and help organizations be more empathetic to their frontline employees. Great point. In fact, I love the fact that we got a chance to do that topic because many times people believe AI is a faceless machine without emotion. And as we move more and more interaction to the machine, are we losing that human touch? Are we losing that empathy that our customers so well deserve? And the thinking here is empathy is about context, empathy is about comprehension, and empathy is about capacity, right? If I, as a human person, don't have enough context about your problem, I will never be empathetic to what you're going And through. I have a lot of problems, so you need a lot of context. <laughs> So when it comes to context, nothing better than having a system that your assistant is giving you all that information. Like we see in a lot of movies, you know, the ambassador is going and meeting everybody in the party. There's no way ambassador knows everyone. But the ambassador's chief of staff is walking with the ambassador and telling the ambassador, now you're going to meet the prince, now you're going to meet this. And then the ambassador does the ambassador thing. It's the same thing with AI. The AI is giving the context to the agent or to the retail store and say, oh, this person has been with us for 10 years. Last time they had this issue, but they were very happy. Imagine you start your, I, I understand. You have recently bought a car, you know, and I know you are going through this challenge. And I think you're probably calling about X, Y, Z. Yeah, it's like, how do you know all this? Because we know you, you're doing business with us. To me, that's context. Yeah. And that context can happen through an agent. That context can happen directly with the customer with an AI system. If the AI system says, I understand you, suddenly customers are like, well, the system is smart. I want to deal with it. Then comes the angle of comprehension. And comprehension to me is key with AI. As I mentioned earlier, AI versus generative AI. Generative AI is about language and comprehension. If I can understand a very complex situation, for example, you're flying with an airline, right? And you have two dogs. And you know you have to pay extra to travel with the dogs. And the question you are asking is, look, I know a typical carrier that I get is of a certain size and there's a certain price, but I have two dogs. Can I have both the dogs in the same carrier? Is that acceptable to you guys? It's not a typical question. Right. No, I don't know how many people even ask that question. And that's why I picked that question as an example. Imagine if a system is able to, a human will be able to comprehend that. They may not know the answer, they will go find out. But if a system is able to comprehend that, and look in the policies and say, there's nothing in the policy that says you cannot do that. But do check with the agent at the gate or hold on, I'm not 100% sure, let me hand it over to the human. Because I'm saying, great, I can deal with the system right now. To me, that's where comprehension is now going with generative AI. Understanding very complex, nuanced situations and responding to it or escalating. And then the third piece is capacity. If I ask any bank, or any financial institution, they want to treat everyone like they are their personal bank. Even the one who has $10,000, even the one who has $100 million. But they cannot do that with the human capacity they have. Right. What if you could give a personal advisor to every customer out there? To me, if you have a Gen AI that's trained appropriately with the right risk controls, you are not able to create a new capacity to treat them empathetically, which you couldn't in the past. To me, that is the empathy part. Right. So now you've mentioned a lot of benefits throughout the conversation that we've had today. Anything else that 
that stands out and any like specific results that any of your clients have seen that that you want to mention so we shared we built a capability for our agents called care coach and the idea there was generating we are training all our agents customer care agents we on all technical aspects. There are technical boot camps. Everyone who becomes part of a company has to go through a training on their billing systems, CRM systems. But they never get trained on company's culture and ethos in a manner they should. Right. And the thinking was, could we use generative AI as a teaching guide to teach them soft skills? So imagine you are an agent, you just log into your system, you get a call, and you handle the call except the person on the other side is not a human customer. It's a well-trained Gen AI system. It actually has a call, it is irritated, it's frustrated, it's happy, right? It has all sorts of issues and you handle that in a safe environment. And then at the end of the call, the Gen AI system tells you, hey, look, you were amazing at these things. But you know, when I asked those questions, I think you could have done better this way go take another call. So your score on this one is 65. And 85 would have been a great one. Do you want to try them again? And you can do that by issue, by topic, by customer, right? So we started with that philosophy and said, can we take agent coaching to the next level? And as I was just talking to the clients in the breakout session, they came to me and they started coming with a lot of new ideas. They said, why can't we use this now for agent specialization? Right. For routing for many other things and we are like well, that's where we are we are just exploring the power of generative ai there's so much more that we can go after the initial deployments that we have done we are already seeing very positive results and we are not saying results from the big company standpoint we are saying results from the human agent standpoint what are they feeling about it how does that help them right does that does it make them feel like a family does that allow new agents to feel more comfortable faster? Because empathy doesn't just limit; is not limited just to customers. It's also to the employees, right? And that's where we are seeing huge value. Yeah, yeah that's fascinating. I think that multi-dimensionality of empathy and how the Gen AI's ability to understand that language context that you talked about earlier. You can, there's so much data available to train these 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 systems that we couldn't get to that scale in, right. in exactly. any other previous technology. Exactly. Like the traditional quality monitoring system is you can listen to 2% of every agent's call, if that, especially right. when you have 20,000 agents, right? And they are all taking hundreds of calls. Now you can listen to all the calls, every single one of them. You don't even have to take detailed notes like a quality monitoring. You don't have to say, well, I had a sample bias because I can now understand every single call and not just to train my agents, but to talk about upstream issues, build strategies around it and go find the next billion dollars of value in growth that I could never do that in the past. To me, that's that's really the next level. It's pretty fascinating. So uh, as, we, as we start to come to the end of our conversation today, uh, for folks who are watching and they're thinking, where do I go from here? What advice would you give folks um, about where they should take the next step and how they should take the next step on their own journeys around deploying generative AI? So I think we just need to be very pragmatic about what we can achieve in the next three months, six months, nine months. We want to make sure we are taking baby steps, crawl, walk, run, right? The best place I see a lot of our clients started, like I said, is in the analytics. Simple. Take a thousand calls. See what value you can generate. It may take you one week. We we're talking, talking about the agile just before this thing. Go agile. Just take a thousand calls and see the power of generative AI. Is that mind boggling or not? You want to try agent assist capability, get another safe zone? Take five documents. Just five documents. Put the right system. Put the five documents. You ask questions. You like what it's doing. Put hundred questions. I put hundred documents behind it. Put thousand. You love where it's going. Industrialize. The steps because that's where we went. We started experimenting. We as Exchange started experimenting many years before ChatGPT became popular because it right. was GPT before ChatGPT. Except 
not many people knew about it. Right. Because there was no chat part. Right. <laughs> and so we were already working with them. So we started experimenting many years ago. And we said, ah, this response is so much better. But what if I tinkered it this way? Oh, that response is even better. So we started building methodologies around prompting, around fine tuning. And now we have come to a level where we are building custom specialized language models, right? Which are domain specific, function specific, industry. Because we learned that when I use the term policy in my question, if I'm an insurance person, policy has a different meaning to me than if I'm in public service, right? right? So these terms, unless I train for a function or an industry, I may get 60% value. When I train it to that level, I get 90% value. And so I feel we need to go through that evolution. Of course, we started early, so we have a little bit of an edge. But as you guys are starting right now, think of those simple experiments that you can run and see the value come out. Well, what I really love about that answer is, is it says there's, there's no wrong place to start. Find a place that looks like it's going to deliver business value for you and then try and see what happens. And, and to your answer, learn and then continue. And we all make mistakes. And then we, we that's how we learn. Exactly. Right? And that's how Just the learn in a works. safe zone so it doesn't create a crisis for anybody. Right. Absolutely. Right. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your insight and being here with us today. I think everyone learned a lot and is ready to take those next steps on there. CX transformation journey by adopting AI in that safe space, or generative AI in that safe space. So and thank all of you for being here with us today in the CX green room. Oh, before we go, Shrod, um, you know, you are a big wig in the CX industry, so that means treats. In this particular case, um, branded blue oh, awesome. and orange, uh, M &M, Genesis M and M's. Genesis yeah, the blue is generative, and the orange is AI. So, <laughs> so, so thank, thank you again. You, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank for being you. Here. Thanks everyone for being here. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, please like and share it, and we will see you next time in the CX Green Room.